And now I'm going to talk about satin stitching for applique. I love applique. It is my first love in quilting. And using a satin stitch or a zigzag, we're going to use it to do this leaf. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to do to have successful applique. First thing you need is to have some stabilizer from the back. And this shape I just cut out. I have some fusing underneath so it's actually stuck to the fabric. But I need to stitch that down. I need to cover this raw edge. In the previous video, we did a bunch of decorative stitching, but now I'm going to do a satin stitch so it'll actually encase that raw edge. So to set that up, I'm going to have my machine set at a zigzag. So I'm going to have my machine set at the zigzag. Now I need to do some modifications, possibly of the width, definitely of the length, because when I stitch this, it's going to be a zigzag. A satin stitch, so for the satin stitch, we want to have a zigzag, but it needs to be close. So we're going to make our stitch length less. So I'm going to change on my machine. The default right now is 1.4. I'm going to go down to 0.5. And now I'm going to test that out. Whenever you do an applique, have a sample of your applique on some scrap fabric with a stabilizer. Test it with the thread that you plan on using. Now, because I am doing applique, I'm using a decorative thread or an embroidery thread. This is almost always a 40 weight. If you remember from the previous videos, a hundred weight is like silk, it's very, very fine. Eight weight is pearl cotton, that's something you use for hand stitching. Applique works really well with a 40 weight. It's a decorative thread, so it's going to show. And that's what you want on an applique. You want your thread to show. We typically piece with a 50 weight or a 60 weight, but that's the construction or the foundation of your quilt. This is why we want a 40 weight, because we want this to show. Keep in mind that because I am doing an applique, I need to make sure I'm using my end foot here. It has the channel that my satin stitches are going to run down. Do not use your J foot. It does not have this channel here. And the J foot will ride above the stitches, as opposed to the stitches running through the foot you'll get unsatisfactory results. Okay, so let's line it up. So the edge of my applique should be right in the middle of that slit in the foot. So let's do a little bit of stitching and see what it's going to do. Let's do a little bit. As you can see, I have the edge of my applique right in the middle of the foot. So I'm just going to lift my foot. So I would say that I need to have that a little bit closer. You can still see some of the yellow background fabric peeking through. So let's put the foot down. Now I'm going to adjust it from 0.5. Let's go down to a 3. And let's stitch that out and see how the three works. Okay, let's see. That's looking better. I still have a bit of gaps in there. I can kind of see a little gap there. Now you can see why it's so important to have stabilizer on the back of your quilt block. If you didn't, this would all pucker up. Let's go down one more from 3 to point 0.2 and let's stitch that out. Satin stitching does take a lot of thread and it's not fast.
Okay, let's see how that looks now. Oh, that looks beautiful. Look at that. Nice, silky. It's like one continuous line. That's exactly what you want. So I'm going to continue up to the tip. So when you come to a tip and applique, what we want to do is you're going to go completely on that tip and always end up on the right side. Lift your foot. And I'm, I usually go one, two, three, one more, four. And now you can go down the other side. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. So there we go. See, that point looks really, really nice. So this would be my sample. I'm going to write on here my length. Here, equal to point 0.2. My width is 3.5. And that's all I changed. Now, I keep this in what I call my book of knowledge, my uh, binder. So whenever I want to satin stitch, I know this is what I dial my machine to. Hey, I have another piece here. This is an applique piece, piece from one of the classes I taught here called Round Trip. Now this is a nice one because we have no corners. It's just all one set of curves. So again, the edge of your applique goes right through the slit in the foot. And this one doesn't even really matter where you start because I'm just going to join up. When we're doing this type of an applique, Never start at a point. Like here, you would never start here. You always want to start down. It's less prominent if you start here and you join here. So I tend to always start about a quarter ways up from the last point. So I would start here and go all the way around. And then I do a lock stitch. I never do a back stitch because then you'll have stitches over top stitches just doesn't look nice. So a lock stitch is the little circle button on your machine. So let's just do a little bit of this. Obviously I have the stabilizer underneath. As you can see that the stitches are being built underneath. That's why you have to have the end foot as it channels all those stitches through. Okay, let's finish that off. That. That turned out very, very nice. So that's with that width. Let's try a different width. So let's line my fabric back up. So right now I have my stitch width at 3.5. Let's go a little wider. Let's go to 4.5. And let's see what kind of results we get with that. Needle down, foot up. As you can see, it's much wider. But that may be the effect you're going for. So that one's point very nice. If you go for a wider satin stitch, you'll have better results. If you have a very skinny satin stitch, it's really hard to line it up on the edge here. So on this machine, I'm going to go up to 5.5. Let's give this a try. foot up. So this was a 3.5 right here. It's 
4.5 and 5.5. The 5.5 that even looks nicer. I really like how it's laying flat. And you see that you've got that nice rounding to the satin stitch. Let's see if I can go up one more. I've gone up to 6.5. So the bigger the satin stitch, or the wider the satin stitch, the easier it is to encase that raw edge. Okay. The difference between the 5.5 and the 6.5 it's not a lot of difference, although I have to say I'm liking this better and better. It's beautifully filled in. That's another reason for using a 40 weight thread or a decorative thread. Embroidery thread is the best thing to use for this. It's got a texture to it and it fills in all the gaps. And of course you want to make it pretty, so use those beautiful embroidery threads you have. So on this machine, there was also the option of using the speed control for the width of your zigzag. And I would like to show that right now. So we're going to go back over to our menu here. Let's go to the options. See where we had the width control? This is on page one. We're going to enable this. Close. So if you'll notice now my width went right back down to 2.5. That's the default. So I'm going to be using my speed control up here to adjust the width of my zigzag. So I'm just going to do a little at 2.5. Just so you can appreciate how small that is. That's hard to get in there. So now I'm going to touch my width. And it's gone wider. Now I can go a little bit more. How big that is. Now I'm just touching the w speed control on my machine. And I can go down. So if you really want to add some interest to your applique, you can have varying width. I'm back down to small. Let's go wider. So I'm just going to show on the camera here. My width is 7. So just watch the width on the menu as I go along here, and as I have it go down. See, it's changing the width on the menu. So if you are an Apple Care, this is the kind of option you want on a machine. Back down to six, perfect. Let's take a look at this now. Isn't that interesting? So we've gone from wide to skinny, wide to somewhat skinny, and then we're going wide again. So it adds some beautiful dimension to your applique. Then when you're finished with your block, you just turn it over. And this is a tearaway. You would just rip this off because you don't need to keep it in your block. It's only used there for... Um, doing your stitches. You can use your scissors or if you use tear away I am using a cutaway. I would just cut it out. As if your, your quilt is going to be washed you don't want to leave this stuff in there. You can just cut it away and there you go. That is using the satin stitch on the brother machine.